y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the forest. Today we're gonna have a little bit of fun. A while ago I did a video making a box using only a set of chisels and I had a bunch of people then arguing that I also used a mallet and I used my bench and so today I'm gonna go into the woods with a single chisel and a strop and we're gonna make a bench. So um, we're probably gonna be finding the stuff we need out here, prepping it a little bit and then I'm gonna take it back to my shop and do it on the floor and uh, yeah, we'll have a little bit of fun. <laughs> Let's go see what we're gonna do. First thing I need to do is go out and get some tools. I need a mallet. Now I, limiting myself, I just have a chisel. So what are we gonna use? Hmm. Now unfortunately there aren't many joiner's mallets out here in the woods, but uh, oh, look, a joiner's mallet. Let's get some work done. Next we're gonna need some legs, particularly something that's strong Ooh. enough to hold me. Hmm. Yeah. Is that strong enough? I think there's some leg material there. Okay, so I found this stick, and this should make some perfect legs. Nice, fairly straight, good, solid wood still, uh, but it's too long, and so I'm going to cut it up into a smaller piece so that we can use it. Should have brought my chainsaw. That would have been a lot easier. Oh well, let's start chopping. So this is going to be a lot of just chop in from one way, chop in from the other way, and remove the waste between. Chop in from one way, chop in from the other way, remove the waste between. Even with it really weakened, hard to break. Here's one leg. Keeping the chisel sharp is incredibly important here and I really spend a lot of time making sure I keep the chisel sharp. It saves a lot of time when we're actually working. I think this should do for our four legs. It's a fairly straight, uh, good, fairly sturdy wood. I'm guessing it's elm, but uh, who knows? <laughs> but we will chop this down later when I get back to my shop. Now we need to go find a seat. I need something to plop my behind on. So let's go look. So let's start looking for a log. Hmm, where am I gonna find a log? For the base, I'm looking for a piece that's like a, a firewood, a, a log that I could cut in half and have a flat space on top and put a couple legs into it. So I'm looking for a beefy piece of wood that has some decent structure still to it and hasn't been rotting on the floor. So, um, something like, oh, like, like this. I think I'm done. Let's go home. <laughs> so I'm actually looking for a tree to chop down. I want a big solid piece of actual log. I don't want something that's been rotting in the ground. Here I found a piece of box elder that uh, would work pretty well. It was laying down as well, so it'd be much easier to work at. Like right got this tree here, and it's still fairly decent. If you hit it with something, you can hear a good solid sound to it. It's not hollow. You can tell there's been some rot, some spalting, but that's okay. Um, I think if I take a chunk out of it like right here, cut it in half, that should make a nice little bench. The problem is, I dropped my mallet somewhere. I think I'm gonna have to go all the way home and get a new mallet. Oh, oh there's one. So, let's chop into this sucker. <laughs> so how exactly do you chop a tree down with a half inch chisel? Well, you do it little bit by little bit by little bit. And sp specifically when it's wet like this, it actually works rather quick. Just chop in one way and then chop in the other way and remove the waste in between. Uh, this may get kind of boring because I'm going to be doing that quite a bit. I have to cut this actually twice in order to get the log out of it that I want. So why am I using a half inch chisel as opposed to a good one inch or something larger or even a hatchet? And the reason is I want to do this all with one tool. And the half inch really is the most flexible tool. So when I get into the joinery later on, the half inch will become far more valuable. Whereas I don't, wouldn't be able to do the joinery with a one inch or inch and a half. So the half inch is the better choice. It just means that this step is gonna take a little longer. The nice thing is I really get to enjoy the bright red firewood that comes out of this. The, uh, the box elder is just absolutely beautiful inside. It's got that incredibly bright, bright red. And these large chips coming out just make it beautiful. So I'm going to go all the way around the ring at this depth and then I'm going to move up the log farther and start chopping it here. That way I can get a log that's around two foot long. Makes it a lot easier to, uh, to work it now and, and chop it close both here and there Make before sure actually taking the log the out. Thanks Luke. I really needed that advice. <laughs> So we just keep going at this, chop in, chop in, chop in, chop in, chop in, until we get it close and eventually we can break it. 
And I thought, mm, I might be getting close to breaking it here. Let's let's actually put some weight on this and see what happens. Nope. Let's keep going. <laughs> so on one side here, I actually had to go all the way around and it meant chopping underneath, which was a little bit more difficult because I had to pound up. But eventually, ooh, it snapped. Happiness, there we go. Now for the other half, I decided to flip it over. But, oh, Luke, why did you keep that clip in there? Okay, let's flip this over so I can get to the underside much easier. Now, it was still rooted in, and the tree was still alive, um, so we're actually manually breaking this tree. It took a lot of force, but it was well worth it because we could flip it over, and then I could address it from the other side. Ah, good thing we worked out the day before. <laughs> so, continuing on, chop in from one way, chop in from the other, move the waste in between. Keep going until we can break this log off, and uh, there is our log. The next step is then splitting this in half so that we can get a seat out of it. This actually, though it may feel like it took a long time, I believe it was only about an hour or so to chop this tree twice. It worked out pretty well. And because it was so soft, we could actually drive the chisel through and, uh, hey, there you go. and break off most of the fibers in the middle. And just like that, we've got our log we need. So let's actually take this back to my home. Uh, I thought I would do the rest of it in the shop on the floor, but I ended up having to take it to my backwoods and had a little bit of fun back behind the house. A wizard is never early. He arrives precisely when he means to. <laughs> so let's split this log in half and we're gonna do it only with a chisel. So how do we do this? Normally you would get your wedges and you would drive your wedges in to split it. Well, the nice thing is you can make your own wedge. A wooden wedge works surprisingly well. You just need to weaken the wood so you have a place for the wedge to go in. So I'm going to go all the way around this, driving the chisel in about an inch and a half to two inches in. And then we can make some wedges and drive them in. So to make wedges, you just find a piece of wood. You cut it to the length you want the wedge to be and then you shear it down. And sometimes you can find these natural wedges where the wood has broken, or you can break a piece off and get that spear that you can then drive into the wood. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to make a wedge. Wider at one end than the other. Drive it in as far as it'll go, and then make another one, put it in beside it. And so here you can see I'll be shaving a log down to create a natural wedge, and then we can drive that one in beside. And then we can move it over and drive it in. And I think I ended up making five or six total to do this and uh, drive them in at different points. And each one would spread the log a little bit and I could drive the chisel in and break some of the fibers inside and then drive in another wedge beside it. And so I tried driving them in from one end and then I drove a few in on one side and kept working those down until we split it. And that was about it. I, I actually I ended up driving the, ch the wedges in from both sides as well to make sure it went all the way in. This one, rather than splitting flat across, actually split with a round in the middle, which was a little interesting, probably just because it was still really wet. But uh, we can clean that off. Happiness. And this is when you break your leg. <laughs> now we can clean this up. And I used one half of it to actually stabilize the other half so it wouldn't roll around on me. And I can shear off that middle pith that was stuck in there. And from this point on, it is a lot of flattening. And this took a long time. It took longer to flatten this than it did to, uh, to chop the tree down. So this was a lot of work. And I shaved it pretty darn close to flat. And then I thought, I'm going to let it dry a little bit. You can use the side of the chisel as a scraping plane and scrape it smooth when you get it close. But the chisel itself does most of the work. So I'm going to let it sit for a while and dry it out and it was, ended up being a year later that I finally got back to this. And after two or three hours of planing it down, we got it fairly close. And so now we're just detailing it out and smoothing the wood down, using the side of the chisel as a card scraper, and then any nicks or cuts, clean them up with the chisel just like planing it. And I'm not spending too much detail on it right now because I'm gonna be need to do more as we get closer to it. Um, particularly with cutting holes through for the legs, we're going to be causing some issues on the top. So on the end, I'm just going to smooth them out a little bit. I'm not working for anything detailed. I like to keep a little bit of that rustic look 
letting people know this was done with a small tool. It wasn't something that was taken an axe and chopped it out. It was actually sliced with a half inch chisel. Give the exterior edges a little bit of a chamfer and then we can start working on the legs. Now the problem is the leg stock I have is like seven foot long and I need to cut it down into four legs around 18 inches long. So we're gonna cut it in half and then cut each of those halves in half. So just like before, chop in from one side, chop in from the other side, get it close to middle and then break it. And yeah, uh, leaving this for an entire year to dry out was probably a bad thing to do because it's much easier to work wet. But once you get it close, then you can break it. If you really want it to look good, oh, cut all that. Oh, why did, oh, let's just, let's just do the video here, Luke. Ooh, look, I just broke it over my leg. I know I'm amazing. <laughs> now we want to do some tenon work on this. Uh, so I'm going to cut this into a square tenon and then put it into the leg. And the square tenon is around an inch and a quarter square on all sides. And using the chisel, we can pare in from one side and get one flat face. And then I'm going to go to the opposite side and create another flat face that's parallel with the first one. And then two others that are 90 degree until we have something that's roughly square. It doesn't have to be perfectly square. It doesn't even have to be really close to square because you can make the hole whatever the leg is. And so I lay the leg on there and mark it out with a chisel, go down in through the bark, and then start chopping in. Uh, don't worry about my leg. I'm really not uh, in danger of that. There's a big log in between the leg and my chisel. So <laughs> once I really started getting to force moving things around, I moved it over onto uh, another log that I could kneel on and get it close in place. And then we're going to work this leg back and forth until it gets close into shape. Adjust the leg, adjust the mortise, adjust the leg, adjust the mortise, and then try and set the angles that we want on these. Then after getting the leg most of the way through, we can chop from the other side. And I'm just kind of eyeballing the hole small until I can make it a little bit larger from the underside until the chisel, until the mortise, the, excuse me, the tenon goes all the way through this. And I, I want these to be very, very, very tight um, because they will shrink a bit more as they're inside. So I'm, I'm literally using a large rock I found to pound them down in. And I'll move them in a little ways, make sure the fit is good, pull them out, move, put them in, pull them out until I get a really nice hard fit all the way down in and then I can drive it all the way down in. Do the last little smoothing and then drive the leg home. And there, we've got four legs on our stool. Ooh, this is happiness. The last thing we have to do is just trim them off, and you've got a chisel. Makes it really easy to flat trim them off. Yes, it would be easier with a saw, but a lot of steps here would be easier with a saw. So here we're just going to chisel them off. And the nice thing is you can get them nice and flat and smooth with the rest of everything else on the bench top. And then we can do our final detail and smoothing using the, the chisel as a plane, and then the side of it as a card scraper. And ooh, we're starting to get good. It's just the last little details on this and make it happy. I'm not gonna add any finish to this because I made it in the wood. I guess I could rub some walnuts on it, but uh, I just like leaving it the way it is. Now I can sit back and relax. Oh, that, that's so much better. <laughs> so there you have it. This is a lot of fun. Is it absolute pretty? No, I just used a chisel and a strop. Cut me some slack here. Next, I need to go out into the woods and nap a stone and just make it with my own bare teeth. Um, but for right now, this is a fun experiment and a good way to just have a little bit of fun in the, uh, in the woods. Now, I did a video a while ago actually making a box using just a chisel. And that was a little fun, but a lot of people were saying, well, I also used a bench and I used a mallet. And so I wanted to actually go out and just use this to make something. Um, if you like this video, please let me know. We might do something similar to this. This one has been in the making for a long time. We actually shot the first footage last year during the fall, and we were trying to make that happen, but ran into a few problems and the snow started flying. So we shot the rest of the footage uh, this year, so that's why things changed a little bit. But I'm really, really happy with how this came out. And if you have any other ideas or thoughts, concerns, let me know. Um, this was just one of those fun things. Never limit yourself. If all you have is a chisel, you can still make things. Um, now, having other things does make it a lot easier. And do you need to go out and try this? No, but it is a lot of fun to experiment with and, and play with. So we might do something similar to this in the future. So if you did like this video, please hit like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Uh, all those things really do help out the channel. And thank you for that. That means a lot to me and helps us grow. 
I think that's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Limited tools, they said. <laughs> yeah, I'm that crazy.